I have a degree in psychology, so I, I usually think about marketing, sales, customer service, human resources, all of these things. I, I think of them through the lens of psychology. Of how can we do this so that X or Y, you know? How, typically, the, the first thought process is, how do I not hurt someone, like psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically? Um, and after that, kind of how do we succeed in our goal while not hurting someone. That's exactly right. But I mean, that's what we do every day. And so um, it has been a, look, we've only been doing it. We, we started this franchise company with the idea, as I mentioned, um, we got the first one open in February of 2022. We never got the FDD done until October of 2022. We started advertising in October of 2022. And a year later, we've awarded 205 licenses to our regional developers. Lyle Myers is the chief development officer of iFlex and several other brands. His job as the franchisor is to find people who are willing to become franchisees for the businesses that he helps to create. In this conversation, we talked about how he got started in franchising and what his role is as the franchisor, as well as why people would want to become franchisees and so much more. We know that that you're going to love this episode. This is number 203. Let's get to it. Lyle, what made you want to get into franchising? From what I understand, it's a very difficult thing to do. And most franchises have massive problems despite the support that they get from the companies that are providing the franchise licenses. So what would make you want to put your hat in the ring and do that? No, I appreciate the question. I, I really fell in love with franchising through my mentor in franchising. I've been doing it now for about 18 years. He was the founder of Massage Envy. So that's one that a lot of people know. Uh, and he really showed me that you're really helping people get into business for themselves. I, I love entrepreneurship and I believe that a great way to, um, allow folks to get on the super highway of owning their own business, a franchisee, a franchise is a great way to do that. Um, and so I really got turned on by the fact that I could help people get into business for themselves. And then it's an, it's an old tired saying uh, in franchising, they get into business for themselves, but they're not by themselves. Uh, and that's what we kind of put together. And so because he brought me along and kind of took me under his wing and showed me how to do that. Uh, I got really excited about helping others own their own business. And you said you've been doing this for a long time. What are some of the things you've learned along the way that has helped you to make better decisions about whether something is good to get into or whether it's something that will never succeed? Yeah, I think... I, I think what I've learned is, is that there are a number of franchises out there. As a matter of fact, a kind of a fun fact that I like to share is that um, when you look around America, certainly you, you would think everything is a franchise. And a lot of times people go straight to food, you know, they think McDonald's and so forth. But the, the little known fact is, is that franchising only makes up 8% of retail businesses in America, only 8%, but they produce 40% of the revenue. And so that was something that I learned early on that it's America, you can go out, you can start your own business. That's what every good entrepreneur does. But there are a lot of folks that would really like to be able to do that, but just don't understand how. Um, and so one of the things that I learned was, is that we can help them uh, do that. And I have to kind of go back to the way I grew up. I never really thought of it this way, but I grew up as a farm boy in Indiana. And what I've kind of looked at is, is that farming is entrepreneurship and it's generational. And so what happened was, is grandpa had a farm. He had uh, his grandkids work with him. He taught them how to be in business for themselves. And so kind of going back to my roots and bringing that forward to franchising with great uh, products that we know and love are things that I've learned along the way is most important. Find that one that you're passionate about and work it and work it and work it just like you used to work the ground when you were uh, 
ready to plant the, the crops. I feel like though farming is something since it's generational that it's also emotional where something like a franchise, you could say, or it's easy to say, you can work at it and think of something that you love and you're passionate about. But that doesn't mean you're going to be successful. That's right. That's exactly right. So how are they successful? By there you go. The That's the next question. Yeah. How are yeah. they more successful so that, than others? They're more. Yeah, they're more successful because we give them the roadmap um, to to follow and give them the um, a way, if you will, to be innovative. So we have a we have a phrase in in the companies that I've been a part of is that um, we need you to imitate before you innovate. And all that means is, is follow the system, work that system, and then innovate and say, hey, we tried this at our store. Maybe it's a best practice for everybody else. And there's a lot of franchise companies that don't do that. But again, that comes with uh, the experience that I've had working uh, on several different types of franchises, mostly in the personal services, uh, although we're getting ready to do some others as well. But the, I think the, the, the key piece is, is how, how can they be successful is to trust that the people that they've aligned themselves with in that franchise has been there before. When you're looking for a franchise, you're not necessarily working just for a product that you like, but you're kind of looking at the people that are behind the brand. And so you have to find that group of people that's done that before. Uh, and that's the reason why I get really excited to talk to folks uh, about particular franchises that I've been involved with because we've done it over and over and over again. So something that I hear people tell me that are thinking about working with me, how do I know that this is going to work? How can you you know, guarantee or can you guarantee me of, of any success? To which I say to them, all I can guarantee is that I can do my part of the work by teaching you what you need to know. If you can guarantee that you're going to listen to my advice and put it into action, then you're going to have success. And if you don't, then your chance of success goes down significantly. So I guess this is a multi-part kind of question. Do you see that as well, that people get into it and they don't follow the advice and therefore they fail or they actually succeed despite themselves because of the brand name. Yeah. I, I really like what you said. I, I, I think I'd like you to be on my next brand presentation to talk to these <laughs> folks because that's exactly the plan. That's exactly the plan. You, you, you follow the plan. And so a lot of times when we're looking, I mean, it's an interview process, right? They're interviewing us to make sure they're doing their due diligence, but we're looking at them as well. And, and so we have a, a process that we follow, even at the first time that we talk to them, there's a process. And that gives us indications on whether or not they're an individual that can follow a process. Because certainly, if they become a franchisee, they're going to have to follow those things. And we talk to them about that a lot. We say, and I, and I mentioned it just a little bit ago, follow the process, stick to the process. There's going to be ups and downs. But you know, to, another old tired saying, we got your back. We're here. We're going to help you. And so what happens is, is that as we move forward and you have a struggling franchisee and they just can't get their finger on it, um, we can come alongside them and examine it because of our experience to say, aha, here's the point, or here's the three places where you didn't follow the process. Maybe they have followed a process and it's not working for them. So we find out how they're following the process, and then we help them there. And I think that's key. Uh, again, if you start up your own business, you got to go through all of those hurdles by yourself. Uh, and so there's no guarantees. There's absolutely no guarantees. But I can say, based on our experience with big national brands that, that everybody's heard of, uh, we, we can help them along. And what's really rewarding, of course, is those folks that did struggle at the beginning and three years down the road, you know, they're buying four or five more franchises. Another thing that I go through, I'm actually experiencing right now, I run a, a monthly subscription based service and it's a service, you know, so it's, it's not software and therefore it's more hands on with the client. And I have a client who, uh, you know, it's almost time for the monthly renewal. It, he paid for a month. It's been almost a month getting ready for the second month and he's unhappy. 
And he's like, I want a refund. I was like, well, you know, it's not a consumption based business. It's a subscription based business. We provided you everything you needed to do this thing. And you say you haven't done it, but we've checked in with you multiple times over the last month asking if you needed help. And yet you haven't asked for help. You haven't even responded to our messages about it. So how could you possibly be upset that it's not working for you when you didn't even ask for help and didn't respond when we offered our help? Yeah, the same. Yeah, that that is that's business, right? Uh, and and those are things that you can talk through. I think the big piece is in in, in certainly in in my franchise companies is that you have a personal relationship. I make friends, right? These people are my friends. They become part of the family. And so you have to have those open communications. So one of the things that we do in the companies that we've built is we set up what we call regional developers. Those are people that are invested, uh, which is a great investment opportunity because they're invested in the brand. They become an extension of us, the franchisor. But what they do is, is they are working within their regional family with their franchisees to include that extra support. So what we do is, is we become very proactive instead of reactive to those issues. So what happens is, is that regional developer is checking in on those franchisees on a regular basis, not just making sure that they're compliant with everything, but also just checking it out and seeing, hey, the sales dropped a little bit. What happened? Well, you know, I cut off my advertising. Oh boy, you can't cut off your advertising. And here's the reason why I'm in it for you. And so they've built a strong relationship so that they can be proactive. Uh, and from a franchisor standpoint, that helps us as well, because now we have people on the ground working with their franchisees that they can report back to us so that we can build a new program or a process or a promotion to help. And so all of those things work together for good uh, for the for the franchisor, the regional developer, and the franchisee. So where exactly does your company come into this process? Are you bringing franchisees to a potential license? Are you supporting the needs of the franchisor, the, the company that wants franchisees? Like, Where exactly is it that your business is making money and, and kind of who is your, who is the person you're kind of reporting to? The yeah. As a franchisor, first of all, we're, we're regulated by the federal trade commission. So there's lots of rules that we have to comply with. We have to build what's called a franchise disclosure document. So for the, for the folks that are listening that don't really understand how franchising works, the franchisor takes care of all of that. So we have a, a what's called a franchise disclosure document that we will, uh, share with you to make it a legitimate business deal. So there's a lot of confidence about that. Uh, if it's not in the four corners of that document, we can't even talk to it. So you can't make guarantees like, oh, this is a license to print money. None of that. It's a legitimate business deal. And it is what we do is we actually advertise that if you're looking to start up a business, a franchise is a great way to do that. Uh, the one that we're currently working on is a company called iFlex Stretch Studios. Uh, and what we do is we advertise on SiriusXM, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. And then what happens is people that are looking to business or maybe have a dream, I've always wanted to do that. I'll check that out. Um, then they actually fill out a form and they talk to me and we walk them through the process, you know, step by step so that they feel comfortable. You know, my, my favorite saying is, is if we get together with them, we're going to be together a long time. So we just want to make sure uh, that everybody, you know, we get started on the right foot and everything is clear to them. And the franchise disclosure document certainly helps us to do that. So you're marketing for the franchisor on behalf of finding new potential franchisees and identifying people that would be good potential franchisees. And if they sign with uh, they sign the franchise license are you getting a commission from the franchisor are you getting a percentage of the business of the franchisee i'm, I'm really curious how like ways in which you, so you find to, the, to scale I am the franchisor uh, the, so the, the franchisor makes money from um it, it's really not very much money on the franchise fee it's pretty it's a pretty low i'm sorry go ahead oh, uh did you hear my question i i did not hear your question you you, you kind of broke up what was the last thing? Did, did, did you hear anything i said or the last thing was what you said 
the last thing was what I said, and and I'm there's a real strong delay here. I feel like I'm in a Japanese movie, but you know. <laughs> what I was saying was, so you're you're doing marketing, and you find a potential franchisee. You run them through the battery of tests. You get to know them. They become your friend, and they sign to become a franchise. Does the franchisor give you a piece of the revenue from the franchisee? Does the franchisee give you a percentage of the equity of the franchise license? How how do you kind of scale your revenue? so that you can be part yeah. of the support network and keeping in touch with them and, and making sure they're successful and all of that. Well, I am, I am the franchisor. I'm, I have a partnership. And, and so we are the franchisor. The way a franchisor makes money is certainly not off the franchise fees. The franchise fees are very low. That's really just to help us support all of the training and everything that we run uh, a franchisee through. So, um, the way the franchisor makes money is that they have to, first of all, we invest a ton of money to get the business started, all of the legal ramifications, the FDD, all of those types of things. And then when we advertise those for sale, what we're wanting to find are individuals that want to run their business and they'll pay a franchise fee. They'll open their business. So in that FDD, it talks about how much it costs to get one unit open. Uh, they'll open their business and they'll begin to do revenue. We do a monthly recurring revenue business, kind of like what you said in your subscription-based uh, business that you do. Um, and then we uh, a franchise or like us, we do a royalty system. So every month um, there's a royalty that we sweep from the franchisees and they're, they pay those royalties to us for all of the support that, they, that, that we are giving them. Uh, with the regional developers, those p folks that in, that individually purchase a number of licenses within a region, they also share in the franchise fees and the royalty. So um, those fr the regional developers can build an annuity stream as well. So do you own the iFlex brand? We sure do. Yeah, in every in every uh, franchise, you you know you file for all the trademarks and so forth. That's all part of the. Hey, just give me ten seconds of your time. I really appreciate you listening to the episode so far, and I hope you're loving it. And if you are, I would love to ask you to subscribe to the channel because what we do is a lot of work. And every week we bring you a new guest and a new story. And what we do requires so much love so that we can bring you something amazing. And every week we're trying really hard to get better guests that have better stories and improve our ability to tell their stories. So your subscription lets the algorithm know that what we're doing is fantastic and no commitment it's free to do and if you don't like what we're doing later on you can always unsubscribe and either way we would love a like if you don't feel like subscribing at this time thank you very much and we'll take you back to the show now a franchise disclosure document and that when they sign that franchise agreement that gives them the right to use uh, our brand. That's what franchising is all about, is building that brand, keeping that brand stronger. Uh, the folks that I've partnered with on iFlex are the founders of the Joint Chiropractic, which is another you know, commonplace brand in, in the United States. 13 years, they did uh, opened up 950 of those. This is their next concept. So um, I, I am partners with them and what I get the opportunity to do is talk to those individuals who say, I've always wanted to do something like this, and I help them along. It's not for everybody. Uh, I mean, clearly, uh, a lot of folks say, oh, my goodness, I didn't know about that. You know, I just, I, they just get information. Uh, but there are a number of folks that we, we help them be, for their first time. There are a number of folks that have already have 10 locations of another brand and they're, they're looking to expand their portfolio, right? Complementary services. Uh, or they just want to go into the service business because retail is drying up, right? Uh, you know, uh, personal services, personal care services is the new retail. If you go to the shopping center, you'll see, you know, place after place after place that is personal services because so many retailers have gone out. So I want to step back a little bit okay. and, and focus on 
the starting of the franchise. Did you say to these guys, hey, let's do this thing together? And they said, great. And then you said, let's pick a retail location. Let's come up with the idea and let's get it running and see that it works. And then I'll go out and find more people to to become franchisees. Like, How do you actually start a franchise like that from, yeah. from that point of view? Great question. So, so again, these folks were the founders of the joint chiropractic. Um, that was a very, very successful pro, uh, uh, franchise and still is, by the way. Uh, but what they started looking, you know, <clears throat> they're serial entrepreneurs. So, uh, you know, the, the serial entrepreneur's favorite phrase is, you know, this is my last one until the next one. Right. And so they started talking about what is the next concept? And I think they wanted to stay in the health and wellness business. And so they started looking around and what they saw was happening in the marketplace was that um, professional assisted stretching is right on trend with what's happening in the marketplace. And what I mean by that is, is that America is getting older. By 2030, one in five Americans will be 65 or older. The beauty behind professional assisted stretching is, is that we have a huge target market demographic. And I think they saw that immediately because we can help uh, individual uh, individuals, youth athletes, 15, 16, 17 years old, because even the Mayo Clinic says regular stretching, uh, when you get that range of motion and flexibility on both sides, it can reduce injury. So parents are saying, hey, I want to I want to get my my uh, student athlete uh, stretches, and then of course you run the gamut of you know golfers and and folks that are just sitting at their desk all day. Their neck is killing them. Their back is killing them. Yeah, yeah. Most folks that come to us is for pain relief, and if you've never had uh, a professional stretch by a professional, you you haven't lived because I will tell you. 25 minute session in this business, we do 25 and 50 minute sessions, 25 minute session, you're done. And you're just like, Oh my gosh, I I had no idea that I was going to see the effects that quickly. So I think what happened was, is they said, this is the direction we want to go. And we have the experience of how to build that franchise company. And that's our model. So a lot of folks say to me, when I talk about the joint, they say, how do you get 900 open of anything? And I say, it's the power of our franchise model. And that's the regional developer model where we go out and find partners. And those folks are invested in all of the licenses in their region. And when we get those sold in their region, they too advertise, um, they get half the franchise fee and, 3% of the royalties for all of their franchisees. So it's a great business model. So, you know, for, for your audience that are entrepreneurs and are kind of looking for the next thing, that is a great way to start that business. And we're doing it with several different companies right now. Yeah. I mean, I saw these stretching clinics. I I don't think I saw iFlex specifically when I was in the States a a few months ago. But I did see a few of them um, in Georgia and in Florida, and I thought, that sounds amazing. I didn't know what the pricing structure looked like, and I didn't go in because I don't live there, so I didn't want to get sucked into a conversation about a monthly subscription that I know I'm not going to be able to use. But years ago in Vietnam, I had injured my, my knee. And so I was very fortunate that my uh, girlfriend turned wife worked at the gym that I was a member at. We actually met there, which was a different story. And one of her colleagues was like the master trainer. She trained all of the trainers. And she also went, like she's Vietnamese, but uh, not my not my uh, ex-wife, the, the trainer. She like went and studied in Europe for some time about stretching and like all this stuff. She had like all this experience. So I went to her for physical therapy and she included stretching in the sessions. I got like maybe 20 sessions with her. And after those stretches, I felt incredible. So I I learned years ago that like having other people stretch you is fantastic because there's only so far that you can stretch yourself. But if someone understands your body, they can stretch you further than you're possibly willing to stretch yourself. And even my ex-wife would stretch me sometimes. And like she also did a really great job. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of the idea. And I'm very lazy like most people. So 
if I could just drive somewhere, well, in Europe, we, we walk most places. If I could, if I could go somewhere and someone would just stretch me and all I have to do is lay there and take it like, yes, please take my money. So I'm a huge fan of the idea. And, and, and you sound exactly like a lot of our clients. I'll tell you, there's no way that you can stretch yourself better than having yourself stretched by a professional, right? I mean, if you, I, I, I tell people all the time, if you're not sure if it works or not, just kind of watch the football field on Sunday morning with all those multi-zillion dollar athletes. Every one of them has somebody stretching them out. Could they stretch themselves? Well, sure, they could stretch themselves, but it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be proper uh, stretching techniques to reduce uh, the injuries. When you have, uh, when when you can manipulate the the muscle and the joint in the right way and return that that area into full motion that fluid motion and control includes better sports performance and reduced injuries if you take somebody like yourself where you're sitting at a desk or sitting in front of a camera and and all at once you're going man my neck is killing me i'm, I'm not you know i'm not i'm not a roofer but i'm i'm hurting my back hurts my neck hurts you come in it makes a big, big difference. And we take care of them uh, all the time. And so again, what happened was they were like, this is right on target. And then when you employ our model inside that studio, we believe that the best way to start a franchise, especially in the services business, is to make it professional, make it convenient, and make it affordable. And I think that's the piece that a lot of these um other brands are missing is the affordability. I mean, you can come into an iFlex and get two 25 minute stretches a month for 79 bucks. If you need extra uh, stretches, they're 39.50 for the member. And that's what we've done over and over and over again. I, I told you my mentor uh, had the Massage Envy franchise. Again, professional, convenient, affordable, $79. Uh, the Joint Chiropractic, Four adjustments, $79. I think we know that number works pretty well. Makes for a little stickier client, uh, you know, than, than the guy who's paying uh, $250, $300, looks at his credit card bill and goes, holy cow, that's my daughter's car payment. I, 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 probably, should, I probably should cancel, right? You make it affordable. I'm sorry, but $250 is not a car payment. It's like $700 now. <laughs> for my daughter. <laughs> for your daughter's what her, a, her car is going to be like I five or six hundred dollars or or it could be you know 20 years old right <laughs> yeah fair enough uh, I, I just know my parents <laughs> cars are both 700 and 700 no my mom's is 500 and my dad's 750 yeah. a month it's freaking crazy and they're yeah. like not expensive cars my mom's car was like twenty six thousand dollars and my dad's was like 40 they're not that much yeah. um yeah. i was gonna say there's a an additional benefit to the stretching service that maybe you've thought through, maybe uh, the joint chiropractic guys have thought through, maybe you haven't, and in either way, you know, just take it as you will. After COVID, people are desperate for human touch, and I don't mean that in a sexual way. Although there, you know, obviously, yes, there's some, but people got used to not touching each other. And as a result, I think we are crying for touch and to go in, especially for elderly people who, who are, you know, maybe alone most of the time. Um, my, my grandma's 90 and she lives in an assisted living facility. She can mostly do everything for herself, but she's there because she's bored. Like she missed being around people. Um, after COVID, a lot of her friends left or, I moved back home with their families or unfortunately died because of age and she's left alone most of the time. So she barely gets touched. So I feel like this is a really great way for them to have the opportunity to be touched by another person. Um, even if there's a non-sexual, you know, obviously connection to that touch, um, you know, especially when you're stretched by a woman, I, I feel like women have a really great uh, ability to heal. And I think the power of touch can be very healing um, psychologically. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, a really great idea for that as well. I don't know if you guys have thought that, thought about that. And if you haven't, it's a great marketing point. You're welcome. It's free. Yeah, no, I, I really like what you said. And, and you know, I, it, it harkened me back a little bit ago when I talked about the fact that Americans, or you, you, you kind of related the story about your, your, I think you said it was your grandmother. Um, 
Americans are getting older, you know, in, in six years, you know, one in five will be over 65. The part that I missed when I was talking about that was I talked about the youngers and then, you know, certainly everybody else. But what I didn't get to uh, was that the older population is a lot more active. I, I always say to people, yeah, America's getting older, but we're really younger. And all I mean by that is, is that when my grandfather was 75, he was sitting in a rocking chair with a shawl on his shoulder. Now today at our studio, and it could be very much what you said, the human touch, but we're helping those folks that are over 65 become active again or more active than what they, because they're stiff. They want to go play golf. They want to, oh man, pickleball. All you have to say is pickleball. And these folks are all over the pickleball courts. And when, when we get stretched, so a lot of times we take out a table to the pickleball courts and just give free stretches for folks so that they understand what's going on. And let me tell you, that builds memberships back at the studio. Sure. Especially, you know, it's unfortunate to say, but, but it's true, especially if you have a, a young, beautiful woman doing the stretches for these guys or a young, attractive man, you know, doing the stretches for these women, you know, yeah, you can come and be my client and, you know, to sign up here and yeah, I could take my money. Just let's go. Well, I don't it, know. It's easy I, to, to we, what we, <laughs> we just make sure that they know how to stretch properly. And we of course, provide of course. An incredible training for all of our stretch therapists. Yeah, of course. But, you know, like I said, in, t in terms of converting people to paying members when you have someone young and attractive going out to those pickleball courts and giving those free massages. You know, what 70 year old man's not going to be like, yeah, I'm going to come and get stretched by you. You know, if it's like a 25 year old woman who's attractive and knows how to stretch well, like, you know, my ex-wife was, was 10 years younger than me. And, you know, when she stretched me, it felt good. Right. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, hey, guys, like when are you going to do that again? Me, yeah. Sean, you've given me like two, two things that maybe we should look into. I'll have to take it back to the partners and see if we want to implement those things. <laughs> yeah. I, I think about this stuff all the time. Cause you know, I, I, I say this sometimes, um, uh, usually once in every episode, cause I don't know who's listening, but I have a degree in psychology. So I, I usually think about marketing, sales, customer service, human resources, all of these things. I, I think of them through the lens of psychology of how can we do this? So that X or Y, you know, how, typically the, the first thought process is how do I not hurt someone like psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Um, and after that kind of, how do we succeed in our goal while not hurting someone? That's exactly right. But I mean, that's what we do every day. And so, um, it has been a, look, we've only been doing it. Uh, we, we started this franchise company, uh, with the idea, as I mentioned, um, we got the first one open in February of 2022. We never got the FDD done until October of 2022. We started advertising in October of 2022. And a year later, we've awarded 205 licenses to our regional developers. So wow. what happens in that process is they now are finding franchisees. And so we've got six open We'll probably end up with 12 open by the end of the year. It's kind of right on track with what we've done with, other, with some of the other brands. Um, probably in 2025, we'll open another 15 to 30. Uh, and that's, it just starts building upon itself. So we're very, very excited about, first of all, helping people in the community, helping them be more active, helping them uh, reduce any injuries, helping them feel better uh, on a regular basis. And also helping the franchisee with a, a wonderful business uh maybe a lot of times their first you know um step into entrepreneurship I'll, i know who to come to if i ever get an idea that's franchisable which i haven't to date yes absolutely <laughs> we are uh we are currently uh we are currently launching a couple more and um i was just at a dinner meeting last night and we started talking about some others so you know it's the last one until the next one. If you know of anybody that wants to potentially franchise out in Europe here, we can talk about it. Okay. I was, I was actually having this conversation earlier today with a partner in the UK. He's came, uh, come to me with uh, this like high end restaurant club that's known in London and they're trying to expand into Southern Spain. And they're like, you know, we'd love to hit Lisbon. And he's like, well, I know a guy that lives there. And they're like, talk to him. See. So he came to me today and he's like, do you know of like where we could do this? And, 
he was like, hey, if, if you could help us to find a place and make it happen, then, you know, we get a percentage of the, you know, you get some equity in, in the business. And I'm like, I know exactly where this thing should be because I know the city well. Yeah, so, sure. um, that sounds great. I don't, I don't think I've seen any stretching businesses here. There's yoga, but like yoga is different, right? There's gyms. Right. But honestly, I don't think I've seen any stretch stretch shops yeah, here. Yeah, a lot of times we partner with gyms just, you know, just do some, you know, cross marketing because, you know, if you get done working out at a at a gym, what you know, you're usually pretty tight, right? So now you you come and get stretched and now that kind of loosens you up so that you're ready for your next workout. So it works hand in glove. Yeah. So what is the most important thing you've learned from franchising? I, I love that question. I, I will tell you that I, it's, it's overused, but people say, find your passion, find your passion, find your passion. I have a personal mission statement. My personal mission statement is passion with purpose. And I think that's the piece that we miss when we say, find your passion. What I would say is go after your passion, but find out what the purpose is. So for me, you go, okay, yeah, but you're in franchising. Well, I've kind of talked about that. I can get really passionate about something when I understand the purpose. When it comes to assisted stretching, I can get really passionate about it because I know how much it helps people. When I think about franchising, I can get really passionate about franchising because I get the honor and privilege of helping people become entrepreneurs sometimes in the first time in their life. They can, they can achieve that American dream of owning their own business. I can get really passionate about that. So if I were to tell you or anybody in your audience, then I would say, don't just find your purpose, find your passion, but find the purpose of that passion and you'll go far. 